Hello, my name is Mr. Gregonis, and today I'm going to show you how to operate the bandsaw in a safe manner. Before I get started with the safety instruction, I'm going to give you a brief overview of how the machine works. The blade is located right here, and the blade is on a band. The band goes through this drive wheel down here, goes around the drive wheel, and goes around a wheel at the top here, and it repeats over and over and over again in one direction. The blade is always going down into the table. A couple things about starting and stopping this machine. To start the machine, you press the green button right here. To stop the machine, you press the red button. You should be the only person turning the machine on and off. And you should only turn the machine on when you're comfortable to operate it. When you're done operating and cutting your material, you want to make sure that you turn the machine off and you don't just walk away from the machine running. That would set up an unsafe environment for the next person that goes up to the machine. So always turn the machine off before you leave the machine. Okay, now we're ready to get started with our safety instruction. Rule number one, operate only with the instructor's permission and after you've received instruction. After watching the safety video today, you'll probably know how to safely use this machine. However, in my class, I still need to be here whenever you're using this machine. You cannot operate it if I'm not within five to 10 feet of this machine. I need to be here. Rule number two, Remove jewelry, eliminate loose clothing, and confine long hair. You'll see that I've rolled my sleeves up today, but if you have long hair that's below your shoulders, both males and females, you need to have your hair tied back. Uh, if you have a hoodie on with drawstrings, you need to make sure your drawstrings are tucked in. Any loose or baggy clothing should be tucked in. Or if you're wearing a jacket, take it off. Uh, but you don't want anything getting caught in the machine. Rule number three. Make sure all guards are in place and operating correctly. Right here you can see that we have a guard on this machine. It's in place and it is operating correctly. Number four, always use proper eye protection. Anytime you're using any machines in the lab, you always want to make sure that you have eye protection on. Protect your eyes. Rule number five, make sure the upper blade guide is positioned about one-eighth of an inch above the work. The work is the material that you are cutting. I have a block of wood right here. There's a knob on the back here. When I loosen that, the bar comes down, the guide comes down, or the guard comes down, and I want to set that about one eighth of an inch above the material that I'm about to cut. Rule number six, allow the machine to reach full speed before beginning the cut. You never want to take a material and push it into a blade and then turn it on. That would be a bad idea. You always want to make sure that you turn the machine on, that it reaches full speed, and then apply the material into the blade. Rule number seven, use both hands and make sure your hands are four to five inches away from the blade. I have this little circle cut out here, okay? The diameter of this is eight inches. This is the uh, four inches is the bare minimum that you want to have your hands from the blade. I prefer five inches, but when I slide this in here, now you can visually see what four inches looks like. Once again, I prefer five, but that's how far away your hands need to be from the blade.
anytime you're doing any cutting on this machine, my eighth, eighth rule is guide the work slowly. Do not force the work into the blade. You want to push the material at a slow rate. You should never, ever force a material into a blade. Typically when you're doing that, it's because the blade is dull. But you should let the blade do the work and you should push slowly. piece of wood and I have my cut line drawn on this piece of wood. It would be a bad idea to have your hands behind the cut line. That would be bad. You don't want to do that. You always want to make sure your hands are either to the left or right or both of that cut line. You never want to have your hands in line with the saw blade when doing a cut. Rule number 10. Do not back out of a cut with the machine running. When the machine is turned on, you might make a mistake with your cutting. Never pull backwards. That could pull the blade off of these wheels, and that would be a bad idea. If you ever make a mistake, turn the machine off after the machine comes to a complete stop. At that point, you can slowly remove your material from the blade going backwards, but the machine must be at a 100% complete stop. Rule number 11. Do not attempt to cut sharp curves. Curves should be cut gradually with relief cuts. Relief cuts are used to relieve stress from the blade. Here is a curve that I'd like to cut. It's marked in purple. You'll notice in red with arrows it says relief cuts. In my class I prefer that you cut relief cuts first on the scroll saw and then any curves you want to cut you can cut them on the bandsaw. The reason I don't like doing relief cuts on the bandsaw is because there's always that possibility that when pulling backwards, you could pull the blade off of the wheels, and then we'd have a problem. Therefore, in my class, please use the scroll saw first to cut your relief cuts, and then you can use the band saw to cut any curves. Here I have that circle from earlier. Remember, the radius of the circle is 4 inches. Therefore, this shows us what 4 inches away from the blade is. If you need to guide the work within 4 inches of the blade, 
you should be using a push stick. And you only use one push stick with this machine, and it's used for guiding purposes. Rule number 13. If the blade breaks, turn the machine off and get the instructor. Occasionally these blades do break. Don't freak out. If it breaks, turn it off and let me know. You're not in trouble. We just need to make sure that the machine gets fixed before another person steps up to the machine. Because when the next person steps up to the machine, we need a safe operating environment. If at any time you can't remember some of the information that we discussed today in this safety video, you can always reference the same material that we discussed in this video on the machine here at any time during class. If you ever reference this material, you should do so with the machine turned off. Do not reference this material while the machine is running. Thank you for your time, and you now know how to operate this machine in a safe manner.